Merry Christmas. Tignan mo katabi mo. Merry Christmas. Ano na yung ampaw ko? You know, the last two weeks, including today, we've been talking about a series. We have a preaching series about money. So if this is your first time, uh, this, our point of study is actually money. And tamang-tama yan because we've received, some of you have received your 13th month pay and some of you will be receiving that soon. And, and so <laughs> there'll be financial provision and blessing, but it's good to have a biblical worldview of money so that we will not be swept by the cultures of the world, but we will still stand on the word of God. And that's why the series is called Think Outside the Box. Let's go ahead and let's look at Luke chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. And Jesus was actually, um, it's my pants with, verse 1 to 2. He also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager And charges were brought to him that this man was wasting possession. So there's this, when you read parables, it's very, it's it's a good thing that we take note of the character. Usually the parables have character and the character represent different meanings. And so now you see here, there was a rich man who had a manager. So there's a big boss. The big boss is the rich man. Yung katiwala niya in Tagalog, yung assistant, or someone who manages a part of his estate is the manager. So dalawang karakter na yan. But, and he, and, but the boss was disappointed with what the manager was doing. And because he was wasting his possessions. So yung rich man who entrusted some of his blessings to his manager, the manager was not doing it properly. Okay, so the possessions of the big boss was being wasted. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management for you can no longer be manager. So he's about to be fired. Okay, trust is no longer there. He's about to be fired. In verse 3, and the manager said to himself, yung uh, assistant, <laughs> what shall I do? Since my boss or master is taking the management away from me, I'm going to be fired. What will I do? I am not strong enough to dig. I am not, I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, he said. So that when I am removed from my position, people may receive me into their houses. What he's going to do is, if he's going to be fired, he will talk to people. Okay? Okay. He will win the trust of the people. Yung mga siguro business partners, customers, clients ng boss niya. So that when he's no long, he does no longer have a job, these people he talked to and helped will help him. Okay? And then in verse 5, so summoning his master's debtors, one by one, yung mga customer, lending pala sila. <laughs> lending company yung business. He said to the first, how much do you owe my boss? He said, a hundred measures of oil. You know what the manager said? Shrewd, shrewd siya, street smart. He said to him, take your bill and sit down quiet, quickly and write 50. So yung utang, diniscount ta ng 50%. Okay. Hindi kaya mas magagalit yung boss. And then in verse 7, then he said to him, said to another, how much do you owe? Another client. He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. So it's discounted again. And then here's the catch of the parable. The master, the boss, was impressed. Di ba ang umpisa, displeased siya. Ngayon, he commends the dishonest manager for his street smart, for him being shrewd or shrewdness. And this is what Jesus said, for the sons of this world who are not Christians are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light, than Christians. And so, ang nakakatawa dito sa parable na to is that the end, the irony of it all, the catch, is that you were a dishonest manager, but then the master commends the dishonest manager because what he did 
was that he wanted to win people. When he's fired, these people will help him. What is Jesus telling us here in verse 9? And I tell you, make, ito na yung lesson. Usually kasi if after Jesus sharing a parable, there is a moral lesson. And the moral lesson to us as Christians, we're talking about money, is this. I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth. So that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. You know what Jesus is actually saying here? The worldly people. May kilala ba kayong worldly na negosyante? Raise your hands, but don't blurt out their names. Alam mo yung worldly people na businessmen na kilala nyo? Yung magaling talaga, yung laway lang yung puhunan. Yung... Akala mo pag binentahan ka, yung talagang mong papabili ka, yung... Sir, 1,000% po ang ROI dito. Yung ganon, yung, yung ganon. Or ang galing makipag-PR. Because, yung, eh, meron nga tayo mga kilala, di ba, negosyante, ilalabas mo sa bar, lalasingin mo, totoo? Well, hindi nyo alam yon. Lalasingin mo, pakainin mo. Ang galing nga mag-PR. To the point that you win him or her, then you get a deal. That's what Jesus is actually saying here. Ang galing na mga non-Christians sa mga ganyan in winning people, in building relationships for their own gains. That's what Jesus is saying. So then, He points it back to us. How about Christians? Magaling ba kayo mag-win ng people for Christ? Pag, bina- pag sinerin nyo ba yung Bible, yung talagang mapapa, in Jesus' name, I, I receive you, Lord. Yung is that it? Yung, do we have that skill as Christians that winning people, not for our own selfish gains and monetary gain, but winning people for His kingdom? That's what Jesus was saying. So ang sinasabi ni Jesus, dapat matuto tayo dun sa mundo. Actually, huh? Di ba dapat we're separate from the world? Di ba dapat the world should follow us? Yeah, but that principle of winning people can be we can imitate that because we're winning people not for our own selfish gains but for the gospel, for the kingdom of Christ. Yun yung sinasabi ni Jesus dito. So, ang tanong niya, since we're talking about money, what are you doing with your money to win people for Christ? What are we doing with our earthly resources so that we can win the world, not just the people, not just the barangay, not just the community around, but the world for Christ. Young shrewd manager was commended because he used his, well, his talents, his skills in winning people, but in that story, for his own gain. Pero tayo, as Christians, dapat po, we know how to use our resources so that we can win people for the Lord. Ito pa nga yung kaya nga sinabi nga ito, so that they will receive you in, into eternal dwellings. That when they see you in heaven because you were able to win them here and help them know Christ here with using whatever resources you have, when you see each other in heaven, they'll receive you. Rich, thank you. Sunny, thank you. Vic, thank you for leading a small group. Diba? June, thank you. And they will thank you. Of course, at the end of the day, they glorify and honor God. But yeah, the gratefulness spirit will be there. So ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about money. What does it have to do with money? Ito na po yung point ko. And then after that, we can all get dismissed. <laughs> we use our money, not just for ourselves, but also for kingdom work. Nagpa-serving ako sa online eh. I wonder what are the results. I'm gonna look at it later. The result eh, the question that I want, I pushed in our online service is this. What are you doing with your money? Where do you spend on the most? So, apat na choices yan. Sinabi ko, A, food. B, clothing. C, shoes. Ay, na, clothing and shoes magkasama. C, debts. Ano pa yung sinabi kong isa? Parang letter D, hobbies. So, yung survey, I wonder, where do people spend on the most? Is it food? Is it clothing or shoes? Is it hobbies? Or is it, uh, what did I say again? Uh, meron pa isa. Debts. 
Yung pagbayad ng utang. Where do you spend on the most? But this is a reminder that every time you receive your income, there has to be an allocation in your budget where, Lord, how can I contribute to what you're doing? How can I contribute? How can I give? So that many more churches will be planted, many more people will be saved, or how can I use my budget, an allocation of that, so that I can spend time with my office mate or my friends, and hopefully as I build relationship with him, I get to preach the gospel. Or how can I set aside a budget where I can support a missionary, doesn't have to be here in church, but in a Christian organization so that the gospel will be preached. Yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus John. That at the end of the day, yung money at yung kinikita po natin, it's not just for ourselves. It's not just for our own. Kasi I understand, we all pay the bills, right? Meral ko mo, di ba? May sobra pa. Di ba? I'm sure we pay for our bills, for the needs. Cell phone bill, internet bill. Ang daming bills eh. Uh, ano pa ba? Paper bill. Uh, water bill. Credit card bill. And then bibili ka pa ng regalo for your friends. And then may, so you think, sometimes we think all the money we earn are just for ourselves. Gas prices. At the end of the day, we have to change our thinking that in your budget, you have to set aside and allocate what can I give for eternal investment. Because at the end of the day, all the things we bought here will come and go. But at the end of the day, merong return of investment pag nag-invest ako dito. I may not see it here on this earth, but I will see it in heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. We use our money not just for ourselves, but also for kingdom work. I know some of our church members here also who support a campus missionary. You know, they will give 12 post-dated checks or maybe automatic swipe credit card. Or mahirap yung bank transfer kasi you forget. But that credit card, and they give to campus missionary because they believe that a campus missionary can preach the gospel in other campuses, in other schools, institutions, and universities. I know some people who are deeply burdened with our scholars, and that's why they give as well. I know some people who gave in this, to this building. So ang point ko po, whatever the Lord's leading you, where to give, how to give, you've got to follow that leading. Because yan ang sinasabi ni Jesus, what are you doing with your, sinabi nga kasi dito, uh, unrighteous wealth, but in other versions, or in the way I paraphrase it, secular wealth. <laughs> with your secular wealth, what are you doing? You can use it when you're on allowance. Kahit sa dyan, tika, you can use, do that, you can practice it. If you're a businessman, you're working, a single professional, even to all our beloved seniors, even it's pen, yung pension nga eh. Yung pension nga nagbigay eh. God the Father-in-law ni Sani. <laughs> Di ba? So ang point ko is whatever the Lord has given you, you have to look at your budget. Kung mag excel sheet kayo, di mag-excel, mag-excel kayo or open office or write it down. But you have to prayerfully discern with your partner or if you're single, you have to prayerfully discern. Lord, how do you want me to use money? How much do you want me to allocate and set aside every month so that I can invest in your kingdom. That's how we do it. And that's what James was saying. He won people for Christ. He's using the resources to win people for himself. The converse of that is for us. Let's look at that. Verse 10. One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, that's it, the worldly wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? The true riches are the return of investment in heaven that will never fade away and will not perish. That's what Jesus said. So who will entrust you with true riches? Ah, okay. Part of faithfulness pala is not just saving and budgeting. Part of faithfulness pala is not just being a good steward of the money the Lord has given me, but part of faithfulness is actually giving in the kingdom of God. Whether it's little 
or much. Part of faithfulness is not just controlling my spending and being honest with my money and strictly following my budget, but it's also investing in the kingdom of God. That's faithfulness. And as Christians, we need to understand that. Let me give you two disclaimers here. Now we're talking about money, giving, and I want to give two disclaimers because culturally, people may have a wrong mindset. Number one is this. The reason I give my money for God's work is not for me to be saved or justify my wrong actions. Hindi ka nagbibigay para maligtas ka. Okay? And don't worry, Rich or Sunny will not call you tomorrow if you've been absent in church and knock on your door. Ah, Ma'am, sir, hindi na po kayo nagbibigay. <laughs> we won't do that. We won't knock and we won't desperately ask for money. But don't, don't you ever think also that as I give more, I will be saved more. That as I give more, for some reason, God will forgive my sins. Give you an example. Kunyari, magibigay ka ng ilimpak-limpak na pera dito and drug money pala. We don't need that money. <laughs> we'll never accept that money. Money that's stolen, nag-snatch ka, and then you sell it, sold it in uh, market market, and then that lump sum of money so that the Lord will forgive my sins for myself, and I give it to the church. To re- we don't need that. They remember, Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I say that because sometimes that can be our mindset. Diba? Bigay ako ng bigay, paano mapatawad ako? Actually, no. The reason why you give this all now, because the Lord has changed you in the first place. Because you now have a relationship with God. That's the reason why you give. You're a child of God. Not for you to be a child of God, because you're a child of God, and you're saved by Jesus already. Sino ba nag sa atin? It's not our routines, our rituals, right? Who saved us? It's Christ. What He did on the cross. It's not you going to church will save you. Porque mag 8 a.m. ka dito, maliligtas ka ba? Hindi. It's actually Christ who will save you. When you surrender your life to Christ, He forgives your sins, you receive Him by faith, then you get saved. From there, as He sanctifies you, becomes, you become more like Him, your value system changes. Your priorities change. Dati, nung hindi ka Kristiyano, maluho ka. Sino dito maluho? Raise your hands. Then don't lie. Okay lang. Diba, sino dito maluho? Yung talagang addict, yung shocks me, bagong watch. I need to get that, Lord. Yung ganon. Meron ka ng 10 pairs of shoes, gusto mo pa ng 10 pairs ulit. Yung maluho na, di ba? Dati, nung hindi ka Christian, or porket may bagong phone, bago na naman, di ba? Papalit-palit. So, you ha- you, nung hindi ka Christian, meron ka mga addictions, may luho ka. But when you get saved, your values change. Your desires for other things, it disappears. And so you start to have your value system reboot and now you start prioritizing the kingdom of God. So itong part na to is sanctification. Not for our salvation, not for our justification, but sanctification. That as the Lord transforms you and as discipleship continues, well, nga, no? you get to realize the important things that really matter. That's what Jesus was t- telling His followers and His disciples. So, tandaan nyo yan. Kung first time mo dito, tandaan mo yan. Okay? Kung drug money, hindi namin tatanggapin niya kahit million-billion pa yan. Diba? Or, you know, if it's a, a ransom money, we're not gonna get that. You don't have to give. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Second one is this. Ito, yung sinasabi ko, the money I give for God's work comes from honest work living. It is assumed. So kung an, yung income na tatanggap mo and it's honest, decent, righteous work, if I, Honest living na lang. And dignified. No? Valued, important work, contributes to, you, to society and you earn from that. Then you set aside that and then you start giving for the kingdom. 
So two disclaimers. That's what you do. Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Mahirap iyan yan eh. Sa ibang tao, it's hard, it's easy to judge. Ayan si June, lover of money yan. Ayan si Vic, lover of money yan. Sampung pares yung sapato. Mukhang pera yan. Madaling mag-judge. Hindi, hindi totoo yun. I'm just, I just use their names. Pero yung love you, loving money by yourself, oh man, that's a blind spot. Right? And so, but this is an indicator. How will I know if I love money, if I have loved money more than I love God? How will I know? It's good to have a gauge so that we can assess ourselves on your own as you process this preaching when you go home. If I love God, how will I know? Or if I love money, how will I know? <laughs> Number one is this. I love money if I hold on to it too much. Take note of what I'm saying, ah. Hold, it's okay to hold on to your money. But if it's too much, paano mo lalaman too much, Sunny? May nanginginig ka. <laughs> Hindi ko mabigay, Pastor. Napaparalyze yung arms ko. <laughs> or yung pag may invisible string yan, from your heart to your wallet. Yung <laughs> it's like the end of the world. <laughs> 50 peso. 50 peso sa... <laughs> yung talagang parang, ano, ang bigat. Yung nagbigay ka, because sinabi ni Lord nagbigay ka, pero parang feeling mo, ikaw pa nalugi. Yung ganun. Ahane. <laughs> ang lakas mo rin eh. No? Hold on to it too much. We ho- Don't get me wrong. You all have savings. I hope. I hope. Sana naman. O na-rapture yan. Na una pa ma-rapture yung savings yung ha, kaysa kayo, ha? You have savings, and so you hold on to it. Totoo naman, we hold on to it, di ba, Peter? We hold on to it. Na nakatingin ako sa'yo, no? Tingin ka sa iba. Masanay ka na pag... But if I hold on to it too much, as if there is separation anxiety, then probably, I'm loving money more. Okay? Second, how will I know if I'm loving God? Oh, I'm loving God if yung priorities ko nagbabago nga. Yung value system ko nagbabago na. Dati, ang nauna, physical, earthly, luho. Yun ang nauna dati. Pero ngayon, since you're growing in the Lord, you get to understand the filter. Uy, that's not what it matters. Di ba yung, yung COVID, pinaano sa atin? Hindi, hindi sa lahat. Pinarealize sa atin yan eh. Di ba? At the end of the day, there are things that really matter. Family, and Shopee, Lazada. These are the things that really matter. <laughs> Grab food, yan. But more than that, yung, you get to realize, sim- sinimplify ni Lord yung buhay na. <laughs> you get to value other things. So I'm starting to love God when I'm willing to invest to His kingdom. Let me encourage you, 8 a.m. family. You've got to fall in love with the world kingdom agenda of God. Ano yung kingdom agenda ni Lord? Go into all the world and preach the good news to the poor. Let me be straight to the point to us. We need to fall in love with God's agenda, which is what? Worldwide evangelization. Countries and nations and people from all walks of life encountering Jesus. That's what we need to fall in love with. Because if you are a kingdom citizen and you will go to heaven, you've got to fall in love and embrace the agenda of God. Not any other governments that these are secondary, third, but the government of God, which is winning the world for Him. 
That's why tayo, as believers, we give. At the end of the day, because for the mission of God to get accomplished. So okay lang yan. Pastor, pwede ba ka magbigay sa organization na to? Missions organization, not victory. Okay lang, basta sinabi ni Lord. Pastor, pwede ba ka magbigay sa local church na to? Okay lang. But if the Lord tells you to give in your local church, which is this is your local church, then go ahead. Pero kailangan, in love tayo sa agenda ni Lord. Kaya ako, na-excite ako. Every time I give to the nation of P, because it's recorded already, I can imagine many of the locals will be saved. I'm starting to imagine, wow, not because of my giving, napakakulit lang yun. God can use another one, right? But because to have a vision, wow, that region will be saved for Christ. Kailangan in love tayo dyan pag Kristiyano ka. Kailangan maintindihan mo yan, ang plano ni Lord, hindi lang para sa pamilya mo, para sa buong mundo. For the whole world. And so we've got to embrace that as Christians. So I'm loving God more if I'm investing on it that has eternal value. Loving money, what else? Money is my security. Ibig sabihin, money is your confidence booster. Meron ba kayong kilala namin? Pag may pera, kala mo kung sino maglakad. Pag tumawid sa market, parang walang tatamaan ako. Sabi ko, oh. <laughs> insured to, no? Kaya kong palitan itong pana to. <laughs> Yun ang maram tayo. Yun. <laughs> Alam mo yun, yung pag pumunta kayo sa party, kung sino may pera, siya may confident. Yun ang maram tayo, ba? Yung if, hindi lahat, ha? Hindi lahat. Meron naman akong kilalang confident, pero walang pera. <laughs> Yabang lang talaga yung kapital. Yun naman ang tawag niya ba? Kala mo naman. Akala mo pag naglakad sa Rockwell, di ba lang? Kala pag naglakad sa Rockwell, duta ka, alam mo. Pero insufficient naman. <laughs> pag sinaksak mo, insufficient balance. <laughs> Pero kala mo siya may-ari ng Rockwell. Pare. <laughs> We joke lang. <laughs> yung sa BGC, ganyan. Kala mo ang daming pera. Pag <laughs> maglakad. <laughs> anyway. Ay, naulit. <laughs> diba? So, ibig sabihin, money is my security. If I love money, yung money is the source of my confidence. Diba? Hindi. Yung confidence mo is in the Lord. Diba? You can have much money now, but you'll never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, you can put your trust there. Right? And you put your value in your life because... You're a child of God. Now look at the person beside you. Yan. Maniwala ka? Maniwala ka man o sa hindi? Anak ng Diyos yan. Kahit mukhang hindi. Diba? If that person has Jesus in his life, yung confidence mo is in Jesus, yung value mo as a person is in Jesus, not on your net worth. I said that two weeks ago, your self-worth is not based on your net worth. So, if I put my trust and confidence in money, then I'm loving money more. And don't get me wrong, money will give you maybe a certain level of, maybe a certain level of influence, maybe a certain level of confidence. It's not gonna last. Not gonna last. When everything is shaken, wala yan. So, you put your trust on something that's more stable. That's why when you love God more, He's my security. Kaya pag ako nagbigay, tapos let's say nagbigay ka, tumulong ka sa taos. Sino dito tumulong sa taos, niloko ka pa? Yung na-scam ka, sino yung dito na-scam? Nang isang church member. Ay, pare. Bad trip yun. Side note, wala po sa notes ko, no? Kahit church member yan, tapos sinabi niya, sis, bro, Sist na palang yun. Sist. Bro, you invest. May ROI. No, 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 no. You don't give. Eh, kasi ka-church ko siya. Eh. Walang ganon. Sabihin ko na sa inyo, 8 a.m. Kahit small group leader mo pa yan, huwag ka basta-basta mag invest mag ng pera na walang kontrata. Do your own research. D-Y-O-R. Dior. Do your own research first. Okay? Number two, due diligence, contract. 
can have a binding contract if you're going to invest. Porque church member yan, or kasi mukha naman siya mabait sa ATM. How great thou art. Pa, nag-lift siya ng hands. Honest naman siya eh. Patay tayo dyan. How great thou art. How great. Hindi. When you're going to do business here, ako nga as a pastor, I would encourage you, don't, wag na lang. Pero if there's a contract, the company is, um, what's the term? In good standing, it is registered in SEC. I'm talking about investment, ha? para maiwasan natin yung investment scams. Tsaka yung mga too good to be true, yung, ay, ito po, pag nag-invest ko po ng 50 pesos, next month, 50 million na po. <laughs> yung ganon, huwag kayong maniniwala dyan, pare. Too good to be true. Anti-biblical yan eh, di ba? Yung, he who, ano, who wants to get rich quick, di ba? Be, beware of that. And so, God is my security. So, ibig sabihin, kahit nagbigay ako, let's say, sa isang whatever, and I feel na parang walang, no, 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 I put my confidence in God, not on money. He's my security. He's my confidence. You know, how many of us believe 2023 will be a good year for us? Because He's my security. Because God is my security. Not because, not because many more money will come. No, no, no. Because primarily, God is in charge. Okay, so yung investments come, tandaan nyo, sulat nyo sa notes yun. Yung sinabi ko. Huwag kayong maniwala basta-basta. Eh, mukhang okay naman siya. Mukhang professional naman. Eh, lahat ganun. Train silang gawin ganun. Diba, malaki na yung simbahan natin, so hindi namin mabantayan. Diba? Hindi naman pwede natin i-ask yung usher, oy, scammer ka ba? Hindi naman pwede sabihin yun <laughs> ng mga usher bago pa mas, oy, 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 mukhang scammer, oh. <laughs> hindi natin pwede gawin yun. So do you have to do your own research? Prayerfully, contract, the company's in good standing, check nyo, tawagan nyo. Ah, loving money is my desires are my priority. Sa akin naman yan, pinaghirapan ko yan eh. How dare you, ha? Huh? Di ba? <laughs> Alam niyo yun, yung ganun po. I work hard for it, I deserve it. <laughs> Katalaga lang. Yeah, I know you worked hard for it. Hindi naman natin din discount yun. But at the end of the day, is it really your money? No, it was entrusted to you in the parable. In the parable, the rich man can be actually God. God is the one who owns everything. We're the managers. Pero pag, if you love money too much, yung desires mo lang are your priority. And naintindihan ko naman yan. Yung mga iba, may monthly amortization, may credit card kailangan bayaran, may tuition fee kailangan bayaran. Nala, I, we know that. We know that. But, yan nga sabi ko, in terms of your budget, we make a way for it so that we can invest eternally. That's the third one. God's desires become my priority. To be honest, I have, uh, it's very rare that I have seen this guy always here. Very rare that I've seen guys that are here. So ngayon, ang reality po as Christians is, usually, <coughs> I need your help, Vic. Sunny, I need your help. Usually, it's a tug of war. That's the journey of every believer pertaining to money. It's a tug of war. So kunyari, yung demonyo, <laughs> Joke lang. You hold my wrist. Huwag masyado, maka maputol ako ah. So it's a tug of war. <clears throat> yung parang, meron mga times talaga as Christians, you can pull me a little bit hard. Let go. So, medyo napupunta ako dito. Natural yan, nangyayari yan to every believer. Yung napupunta ako dito, medyo nagiging busy and everything. So pag napapansin mo na, na, and the Holy Spirit is prompting you already, na I'm leaning here, you have to, I have to repent and ask the Lord, Lord, help me, you can let go, Sunny, to be here. So it's a tug of war. Thank you. Give a big, big hand for these two gentlemen. 
So kaya every day yung sanctification na ginagawa ng Panginoong Diyos sa atin, ng Holy Spirit, kailangan chine-check niya yung Lord in your heart kasi natural pwede talaga tayo mapunta dito. Minsan, dito. Pero mas syempre, mas gusto natin, we love God more. It's a simple message, but I really do hope we we get to live it out. At the end of the day, we use our money not just for ourselves, but also for kingdom work. When we had a fellowship with some of our businessmen here in church and um, Pastor Paolo and I were there and we were just telling them how they are, asking them how they are, um, what are they up to, what are the things na parang you've learned because we brought them to a retreat called Journey of Generosity and it was a refreshing teaching for them because it reminded them na then madeo na o nga no my money is not just for myself it's for a greater work and the greater work is for Christ Christ winning the world and so there was one businessman woman sunny that uh, reminded me yung grabe lang uh, in in the midst of her income in her business that she's managing no sabi niya every time she receives profit she sets aside already a certain percentage and literally puts it in an envelope. And that envelope is used for kingdom work. So that envelope will not be touched for, his personal, for her personal gains or personal wants. It will be set aside there, continue to put, put, and put until the time to give it away. But when she gives it away, she gives it joyfully, and peacefully knowing at the end of the day, she set aside for it. And at the end of the day, the Lord will take care of her. You know what? She's been doing it for years. And she's been supporting our cross-cultural missionaries. Pag sinabi kong cross-cultural, missionaries are different in the different nations. And she's been doing that. And when she did it, wow, sabi ko, galeng. That's what it means. That my money is not just for my personal gains, but also for kingdom work. Can we all stand? I want to encourage all of us today. Pag-pray natin, no? Um, ako rin eh, kailangan ko rin tingnan ulit yung what can I do, Lord? As your, child, as your child, prayerfully discern. Every month, when there's an income, to all our retirees, pensions included. Students, allowance included. Diba? Young professionals, businessmen, profits included or income. What can we do? What can I do, Lord? Pag pray nyo when you get home or in your quiet time, Lord, what can I do, Lord? Speak to me the percentage so I can allocate that and set it aside for kingdom work. Yung for myself, earthly investment. For kingdom work, it's eternal investment. So kailangan, as Christians, dalawa yun. May earthly investment ka, pero meron ka eternal investment. What I'm talking about today is the eternal investment. Music team, can you come up here, please? Let's bow down our heads and pray. Father, help us love you more. Lord, I pray that there will be greater passion not just for the, the things of this world, more importantly, your kingdom. Winning souls for you. So I pray you would speak to each one of us, Holy Spirit. Let there be a spirit of generosity that will just be stirred up. Let there be that spirit of generosity. You will not love money too much or, or hold on to money too much. It's, it's just giving. So I just pray, Lord God, right now, that you would speak to each one. You know, there's this lyrics. It's an old song and, and I like the lyrics and I, it reminds me, oh nga no, tama yung song. Yung, the lyrics goes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. We look full into His wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim 
in the light of your glory and grace. And that's my prayer for us, that we turn our eyes on Jesus. Then we get to see the temporal things fade. And we see the eternal value of His kingdom. Amen. Keith, can we sing that song, How Great Thou Art? I may forget this, I'll say it now. No. One, one practical and doable application for all of us is, you know, you use your money to treat someone, maybe for coffee or for lunch, and try to minister to that person. That's a doable act. You know, try to do that. I mean, it doesn't have to be today, but pray for it. Sino ba yung office mate, barakato ko na pwede kong ilibre? And, Maybe whatever that person is going through, I can pray for that person and hopefully and gradually introduce him or her to Jesus. Amen. Let's do that. Let's be a blessing to people. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Help us apply this in our lives. Protect us, Lord, as we leave and give us a fruitful week ahead. It's for your glory and for your honor always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. See you next Sunday.